In this module, we will learn about the National Adaptation Planning Process, or NAP as commonly known, and how can the SA Downscaler support the development of the NAP. First, let us start by understanding what the NAP is. What is the National Adaptation Plan Process, or NAP process? If we are looking for ways to help countries better plan for climate change adaptation, the NAP, or National Adaptation Plan, is a good place to start because it provides a roadmap for planners and decision makers to fully consider climate change concerns across sectors and budgets from local to national. It puts countries on a path towards climate resilience by reducing vulnerability and increasing adaptive capacity. In this module, we will learn what the NAP journey looks like and how the S8 Downscaler will help in developing the NAP. There has been progress made to address immediate and urgent climate change impacts through the development of the National Adaptation Programs of Action in the least developed countries. This was adopted at the seventh session of the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in 2001. However, this set of solutions lacked mechanisms to help countries systemically address their longer-term adaptation needs. Therefore, a process was initiated at the 16th session of the Conference of Parties to enable least developed countries to formulate and implement national adaptation plans. In 2011, at COP17 in Durban, South Africa, the parties to the UNFCCC requested that the expert group within the least developed countries draft comprehensive technical guidelines for NAPs with the assistance of experts from the UN's Global Environment Facility, as well as academic and non-governmental organizations. In December 2012, the experts group published the technical guidelines for the NAP process. These guidelines are now widely used as a key resource for medium and long-term adaptation planning by countries. The guidelines are not prescriptive, rather they are adaptable. There is no single approach that applies to all countries, and each country can determine the steps to take in order to complete their planning process on their own. The guidelines are generic in nature because they can be used by both LDCs and non-LDCs. Finally, they are iterative in the sense that the elements, steps, and activities build on and inform one another. These elements can be viewed as distinct building blocks that come together to form a process and formulate an implementation process. The NAPs are intended to help LDCs reduce their vulnerability to the impacts of climate change by building adaptive capacity and resilience while facilitating the integration of climate change adaptation into new and existing policies, programs, and activities. The S8 Downscaler can help address climate change and enable adaptation, particularly at the local level, by combining climate change projections with local climate data and knowledge. The resulting insights can then be used to devise adaptation strategies, including preparing for and adjusting to changing patterns of extreme events. The NAP technical guidelines identify four elements required for the formulation and implementation of national adaptation plans. These include laying the groundwork and addressing gaps, preparatory elements, implementation strategies, and reporting, monitoring, and review. Each element is comprised of a series of steps with 17 steps in total and key guiding questions to facilitate each step. We will look at each of these elements and later see how the S8 Downscaler can support the related processes. Element A, laying the groundwork and addressing gaps. This is the first step to start the NAP process and it involves general planning and decision-making processes that outline development and climate change priorities. The goal is to get the NAP process started. Governments may be required to develop a mandate for the NAP process as well as clear rules and coordination mechanisms for ministries and key stakeholders. At this stage, it is critical to consider the need for countries to initiate the national adaptation planning cycle, as well as to investigate what adaptation activities are already underway and where gaps in capacity, information, and resources exist. The outputs from this stage could include the formation of coordinating committees, a synthesis of available data and knowledge, and a strategy or roadmap for the NAP process. Element B, preparatory elements. In this case, countries can include all stakeholders in the preparation of a NAP that builds on and is compatible with sectoral, subnational, and national plans and strategies. 
To do so, a clear understanding of climate change scenarios and impacts are required, as well as an understanding of the current and future climate risks that the country is likely to face. What are the sectors and regions most vulnerable to climate change? Countries may be working on climate scenarios, risk analysis and vulnerability assessments, adaptation options evaluation, and the development of national adaptation plans at this stage. The plan would be to include concrete adaptation plans and projects that have been approved by national authorities. Element C, implementation strategies. During this element, the emphasis shifts to adaptation actions, including national and local budget allocations, which can be prioritized within the country's long-term planning and implementation process. The questions here are how we prioritize adaptation work at the national level while keeping larger development needs in mind. What are the potential implementation costs? How will these expenses be met? Countries may develop strategies for implementing NAPS during this phase, or they may implement concrete adaptation measures in conjunction with NAPS. They will also work to improve institutional capacity and regulatory frameworks for NAPS at the national, sectoral, and subnational levels, as well as to ensure synergy with other multilateral environmental agreements and programs at the regional and national scales. Element D. Reporting, Monitoring, and Review This element is used to monitor and review the NAP process to assess progress, effectiveness, and gaps. Respective countries gather information on the NAP process, evaluate it using a national m and system, and share outputs for reporting progress to the UNFCCC COP. The important questions to consider here are what information and metrics are required to monitor progress gaps and NAP process lessons. How, for example, should the NAP documents be distributed to the UNFCCC Secretariat and other stakeholders? Potential Sources of Financing for the NAP Process Financing is required throughout the NAP process, from its inception to the execution, monitoring, and assessment of prioritized adaptation measures. The amount of money required by each country will differ based on its unique situation, but it is expected to be substantial, especially at the implementation phase. The NAP Global Network Financing National Adaptation Plan Processes Guidance Note recommends three key considerations when preparing to access finance for the NAP process. 1. Identification of the financing gap, which should take place during the planning and formulation phases of the NAP process. This will determine the amount of finance required to cover future operating and investment costs. These estimates should cover all costs for the full process from development to implementation phases, as well as monitoring and evaluation. 2. Determining financing options to see if they can combine various sources of funding to satisfy their needs considering their national circumstances. The variety of financial alternatives available for climate adaptation will be determined by the current state of development, existing bilateral and multilateral agreements, and the presence of national or regional adaptation programs. 3. Developing practical steps for moving the NAP finance strategy from plan to action, which should include realistic next steps to improve funding access. These can include policy reforms, strengthening institutions and coordination mechanisms, preparing proposals, capacity building, and establishing systems that monitor and track adaptation finance. Let's explore the different types of finance opportunities that exist for the NAP process. Apart from regular government financing, bilateral and some private sector financing, there are also multilateral funding possibilities which involve public funds delivered via tailored institutions and mechanisms through grants. The following are popular financing sources that countries can access to support their NAPs and for general climate adaptation and mitigation. The Global Climate Change Alliance Plus, a European Union flagship initiative which is helping the world's most vulnerable countries to address climate change. The Adaptation Fund, which finances projects and programs that help vulnerable communities in developing countries adapt to climate change. The Forest Carbon Partnership Facility, a global partnership of governments, businesses, civil society, and indigenous people's organizations which focus on reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. It also supports forest carbon stock conservation, the sustainable management of forests, and the enhancement of forest carbon stocks in developing countries, 
activities commonly referred to as Red Plus. The Global Environment Facility, which serves as a financial mechanism for several environmental conventions, including the Paris Agreement. The Green Climate Fund, which is the world's largest climate fund, mandated to support developing countries raise and realize their nationally determined contributions ambitions towards low emissions and climate resilient pathways. With the support of the Ministry of Environment Japan, the Regional Resource Center for Asia and the Pacific at the Asian Institute of Technology has developed an e-learning course on how to develop project proposals to access GCF finance. This course is available at the rrc.ap e-learning hub. The platform can be accessed free of cost to learn about GCF project proposal development. Now, let's look at a case study from Thailand on the formulation and implementation of the National Adaptation Plan. Please note, as discussed above, the NAP guidelines are not prescriptive, rather they are adaptable based on the circumstances of various countries. Thailand initiated the National Adaptation Plan process in 2015 and was approved by the National Committee on Climate Change Policy in 2018. The key operational body in Thailand on climate change is the Office of Natural Resources and Environmental Policy and Planning, or ONEP, within the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. The Climate Change Management and Coordination Division of ONEP leads the climate change efforts on behalf of ONEP, including the development of the National Adaptation Plan. Thailand's NAP integrates six sectoral priorities, including water management, agriculture and food security, tourism, public health, natural resource management, and human settlement and security. It involves the Office of Agricultural Economics in the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives, as well as the Department of Tourism in the Ministry of Tourism and Sports, the Department of Health in the Ministry of Public Health, the Office of the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, the Department of Public Works and Town and Country Planning in the Ministry of Interior, and the Office of the National Water Resources. An interministerial working group was furthermore established by ONEP to steer the overall planning for adaptation at the national level. At the start of the NAP process in Thailand in 2015, the country conducted its first nationwide vulnerability assessment on potential risks related to climate change, followed by a gap analysis resulting in the development of sector-specific risk maps. The following year in 2016, ONEP with the support from GIZ in the frame of the Risk-Based National Adaptation Plan project organized a series of conferences and meetings, with each meeting focusing on different thematic areas with the objective of enhancing the inclusive and multi-stakeholder-based approach in the NAP process. The Vulnerability Assessment of 2015 and Development of Impact Chains for Climate Risks in different sectors at national and subnational levels served as basis for the quantification of risks in respective sectors and helped in the design of the sector-specific adaptation options. During the same year, the first draft of the NAP was developed. In 2017, the drafted NAP was implemented in four priority sectors, including tourism, health, human settlement, and water management in Chiang Rai province, Nakhon Sawan and Mahasarakam, Udon Thani City, Upper Chapraya Basin, and Andaman coastal areas. In 2018, Research and studies were conducted to develop indicators and frameworks for monitoring and evaluation. The same year, Thailand released the second draft of the NAP, which went through a national public hearing and was reviewed by the National Working Group on Integration of Adaptation Implementation, Subcommittee on Climate Change Policy and Planning Integration, and was reviewed and approved by the National Committee on Climate Change. During the entire NAP development period, the process was supported by different national and international organizations and research institutions including UNDP, EU, GIZ, JICA, TRF, NRCT, and TGO. Now, let's look at how the output from the S8 Downscaler tool can help with the NAP process. Adaptation planning, such as the National Adaptation Plan, is primarily for lowering future climate risk and so it requires a thorough grasp of anticipated future risk trends. Future risk is shaped and defined by patterns in exposure and vulnerability, as well as future changes in climatic hazards. 
Information is therefore critical in climate change adaptation planning, just as it is in any other decision-making process. Formulating and implementing a national adaptation plan requires us to answer a lot of difficult questions about climate threats and future scenarios, and then apply those answers when presenting adaptation policies and actions. This is where the S8 downscaler comes in handy. The S8 downscaler can make three significant contributions to the NAP process. They are in the fields of climate projection, impact assessment, and economic evaluation, all of which are critical to the success of the NAP process. Let's look at each of these in detail. A climate projection, as we learned before, is the simulated response of the climate system to a scenario of future emissions or concentration of greenhouse gases based on different socioeconomic, technological, and population development pathways that can reach far into the future. This projection is often the starting point for understanding more about the climate that countries will face moving forward. It will inform decision makers and stakeholders at the national and subnational levels about expected climate changes and the projected impacts, enabling them to plan appropriate adaptation measures. It will also allow us to review the suitability of current and planned practices, policies, and infrastructure. The S8 downscaler has the capacity to produce different climate scenarios based on multiple attributes, such as temperature, precipitation, land use change, energy consumption, and weather-related disasters. Climate change impact assessments seek to characterize, diagnose, and project risks or impacts of environmental change on people, communities, economic activities, infrastructure, ecosystems, or valued natural resources. They offer fundamental scientific information about the potential consequences of climate change, allowing us to begin consideration of potential responses to these consequences. Countries conduct impact assessments at the national and regional scales to analyze the effects of global change on the natural environment, agriculture, energy, land and water resources, transportation, human health, human social systems, and biological diversity. Impact assessments often begin by examining changes to temperature, precipitation, and other climactic variables under multiple scenarios of greenhouse gas emissions, which the S8 downscaler can help generate. The S8 downscaler can then assess the potential impacts of these changes on a geographic area, economic sector, community, or resource to provide information to managers, decision makers, or policy makers. It is important to engage stakeholder groups to further broaden and deepen the key issues identified and to bridge the scientific information with user needs and questions. These meetings can also be used as an initial opportunity for developing options to address the effects of climate change. Given the uncertainty and complexity around climate change, there is a need for more evidence to underpin the economic case for action on adaptation. A cost-benefit analysis is a widely used method to evaluate the economics of different adaptation options and inform prioritization. In general, if the benefits exceed the cost, the activity may be considered worthwhile from an economic perspective. In climate change, the economic evaluation is mostly associated with climate risk and uncertainty. Even in cases where we know that climate change will impact a sector, predicting the magnitude and frequency of these impacts is filled with uncertainty. The S8 downscaler will aid in this economic evaluation by providing information on the current physical baseline, which could include current weather patterns and variability, such as sea levels, storm surges, and so on. This data can be compared with information on spatial distribution of population, income ranges, types of economic activity, use of natural resources, uses of infrastructure, and other variables to obtain realistic projections of economic loss or gain to enable informed decision-making on adaptation measures. We have looked at how the S8 downscaler can support the NAP process in general. Now let us look at how the S8 downscaler can support each element of the NAP process following the steps proposed in the technical guidelines for the NAP process developed by the LDC Experts Group. The proposed steps in element A are 1. Initiate and launch the NAP process. 2. Stock taking. Identify available information on climate change impacts, vulnerability, and adaptation and assess gaps and needs. 3. Address capacity gaps and weaknesses in undertaking the NAP process. 4. Comprehensively assess development needs and climate vulnerabilities. Now let's look at how SA Downscaler will support element A. It will 
support decision-making on technical and financial agreements by understanding climate scenarios, decide short and long-term adaptation needs based on projected climate trends, check available data for current and future climate risk and vulnerabilities, support decision on storage of climate data and coordination in using it, help identifying current gaps in capacity in climate data analysis, provide opportunities to integrate climate adaptation in development planning, and facilitate coordination among sectors by using the same downscaler system. The proposed steps in element B are 1. Analyze current climate and future climate change scenarios. 2. Assess climate vulnerabilities and identify adaptation options. 3. Review and apprise adaptation options. 4. Compile and communicate national adaptation plans. 5. Integrate climate change adaptation into national and subnational development and sectoral planning. In element B, the SA downscaler will help provide important climate patterns based on observed data for adaptation or acclimatization of social systems. Understand climate vulnerabilities and impacts in different sectors. Provide cost-benefit analysis to understand viable, cost-effective options. The proposed steps in element C are 1. Prioritize climate change adaptation in national planning. 2. Develop national adaptation implementation strategy. 3. Enhance capacity for planning and implementation of adaptation. 4. Promote coordination and synergy at regional level and with other multilateral environmental agreements. In element C, the SA downscaler will help support prioritization of implementation based on risk and vulnerabilities and facilitate cross-sectoral implementation. The proposed steps in element D are 1. Monitor the NAP process. 2. Review the NAP process to assess progress, effectiveness, and gaps. 3. Iteratively update the national adaptation plans. 4. Conduct outreach on the NAP process and report on progress and effectiveness. In element D, the SA downscaler will help provide metrics and information required for the monitoring. Decide frequency for the monitoring process. Access more information to update or revise the NAP. And provide communication information for reporting to the UNFCCC, donors, and other stakeholders. Finally, we have reached the end of our course. I hope you enjoyed it and will make full use of the SA downscaling tool to help you with your climate adaptation strategies. If you found this course beneficial, please share it with others who also might be interested. Thank you very much.